which we feel that we must hide from you because um, either in appearance, costuming, handwriting, or some other aspect of uh, personal character would uh, give you too much information. Are the blindfolds all on place now? Yes, Mr. Daly. Well, good. Well, our first challenger come in and sign in, please. Now, panel, needless to say, I can't tell you what our guest's name is because there again we might tell you too much. So I will ask our guest, first of all, if he is familiar with our scoring operation, are you? Yep. Well, if you're familiar with the scoring operation, let's let our friends here in the theater, the folks who are at home, know exactly what your line is. Very good going, Fred. Actually, um, I must say that um, Mr. Churchill was a bit surprised after he gave an answer of more than a monosyllable that uh, it didn't come up sooner, but I thought you did very well disguising your voice. Well, I met Mr. Churchill. He may not, he not, may not remember it. Nobody remembers the, when they've met me. <laughs> but uh, when we were in London with Tallulah uh, three or four years ago. I remember very well. And I met you there. I wouldn't forget a thing like that. And as it went around, I... Uh, I couldn't see you through the mouth. <laughs> well, I wasn't talking with my eyes. <laughs> my pupils were sitting down at the moment. <laughs> well, sir, your great father has done us much honor on many public occasions by referring to the fact that your grandmother was an American, and we kind of think that you are, in a way, American well, too. Well, I'm afraid I'm only a 25% American. 25% American. Are you going to stay in the United States for a bit? Not very long. I'm. Uh, uh, flying down on Tuesday to South Carolina to see uh, Mr. Bernard M. Baruch. I rather want to know what's going on in this country, and I find he usually has some clues. And I'm coming back and going back to England on, flying back to England on Friday. Well, it's very nice of you to have taken some time out to spend with us. Thank you. Well, it's been good to have you on. Good beginning. Now let's see the if we can. Accuse me of knowing all the time, John. Well, you, actually, you're from my lawyer. You're from Boston, which is the next thing to being British, anyway. You know. That's right. I yeah. guessed uh, Mr. Lodge the other day too. You guessed Mr. Lodge, Lodge too. I guess that's my field, John. I I'm afraid. I think that is, Fred. You just read so widely, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. But we've got one for you. Cinerama your reader. I read widely. <laughs> you read widely. <laughs> Let's see what you can do with another challenger now, Mr. Allen. You oh, can I'm get through me. for the night. You're through yeah. for the night. Will you sign in, please, sir? Floyd. Carlson. Is that right, sir? From. Richland Hills, Texas. Richland Hills, Texas. Well, it's nice to have a Texan with us. And uh, actually, we're a little bit short of time tonight. You know, I think if you don't mind, you take a look at the panel. Then you come with me. We won't give them any more clues, eh? Okay? And uh, tell me if you know how we score this operation, do you? Yes, I do. You do know how we score it? Then let's let the folks at home and our friends here know exactly what your line is. Panel, once again, to be as helpful as we can, I will tell you that Mr. Carlson is salaried. And let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mr. Carlson, uh, do you deal in services? Yes, I do. Are they beneficial for both men and women? Yes. Uh, do they come to you, these men and women? Yes. Do you work indoors? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Arnaz. I don't work indoors. Nobody in um, Texas works indoors. I guess so. <laughs> Not in Texas. Wide open spaces. I'm going to be in Texas next week. Uh, maybe I'll come to you for one of these services if you could tell me.
nice. Yeah. Uh, if I went to you for one of this, uh, would I feel better after I got through with it? Yeah. I would feel better? I would think so, Desi. I think it's, it's fair and safe to say that if you were to call on Mr. Carlson for his services, you'd feel pleased about having had them. Uh-huh. Uh, if I went there, would you, uh, would you, uh, touch me in any way when you're doing this thing? No. I wouldn't think it was would. necessary, no. I mean, that I will admit, Desi, that it's possible, as is true in all these cases, there might be some physical contact, but it's not... He works by long distance, yeah. Yeah, look. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> Mr. Carlson, could I enjoy your services as well as Desi? Yes. Oh, he's got better racket as well. <laughs> <laughs> and we would be out of doors whenever we negotiated whatever this is. <laughs> yes. Uh, what part of Texas did you say you were from? Richland Hills. Where's that near? <laughs> Not, Texas. No clue. Uh, do you ever work on? Do you ever work with animals? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. You confine all of your activities to human beings, do you? Yes. And uh, do you... Uh, see, Desi put it out of my mind. I was going to ask you something. <laughs> but I... Uh, <laughs> you work out of doors. Do you, is there a product involved in what you do? Of any sort? No, not... Uh, no. <clears throat> Actually, there is, as is often the case, but a product... Uh, you know, in the area, but the base, basically our friend Mr. Carlson deals in services. He does uh -huh. not convey or purvey a product of any kind. Good. Yes. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Mr. Carlson, since you work out of doors, does locomotion have anything to do with your job? Yes. Uh, do you, uh, in carrying on your work, go from one place to another? Yes. Uh, do you go from one place to another um, in the air? Yes. Jolly good. <laughs> uh, then you are in some method of transportation that flies. Is it something that is not usually used in the air? I mean, is it unlike an airplane, for example, that is average? Everybody uses those. Do you have some other mode of transportation in the air other than an airplane? You mean a standard commercial airliner? All right, John, yes. <laughs> yeah, your answer would be yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, would it be a form of locomotion such as a helicopter? Yes. It's a whirly bird. Don't call it a helicopter. <laughs> whirly bird. I was in one down in Tampa. That's what made me think of it. Uh, do you operate a helicopter line? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Arnaz, I want you to meet Mr. Carlson because he's going to be at Jamestown tomorrow to fly you and Miss Lucy to your... Oh! <laughs> Mr. And actually, you better go get some rest, huh? You better go home and get some rest. <laughs> actually, Mr. Carlson, and by the way, I think statistics are very interesting in this degree. He's with, he's one of the test pilots for Bell Aircraft, but this is the third man in the United States to get a helicopter license. Love it. Uh, Mr. Carlson, thanks very much for getting enough time. We've also had you with us in that panel. I thought, panel, that was a tough one. We thought we'd do much better. Now, in just a moment, we're going to meet tonight's mystery guest. But first, for a message from Remington Rand, we switch you to the CBS remote unit. Don't touch that dial. The golden years of television will be right back. Answer me. No singer was ever loved or admired as much as Bing Crosby. And now Crescendo Records presents 45 of his finest performances on the radio years. To the tango. This remarkable collection features many of the biggest stars of stage, screen, and records joining Bing to sing their biggest hits. make you open your heart. But I can dream together. If I knew you was coming, I'd have baked a cake. How'd you do? How'd you do? How'd you do? We were saying. The radio years spotlights many of the world's most beautiful songs. Overlooked by the record companies when it comes to royalties. 
And that's 